Should you change your contact points? Well, you might be wondering what your contact points are. Well, basically, it's any part of your body that touches your bike, be in your hands, your feet, and of course, your bum. And if you get these dialed on your bike, you're gonna have way more comfort, control, and confidence next time you hit the trails. The contact points on your bike are gonna be your pedals, your seat, and your grips. All very basic components, but they can definitely affect your ride. So let's take a look at all those components in a bit more detail, and let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Firstly, the big question, should you be using flat pedals or clip pedals on your e-mountain bike? Well, we see a lot of e-bike riders using flat pedals purely because the motor will make up for any inefficiency that you will get from using flat pedals. However, if you're into riding more cross-country or more sedate style of riding, then a clip pedal could see you get more range, more power, and more efficiency from those pedals. So the width of the pedal is something that you want to consider too. Now, this is all dependent on your shoe size and the style of riding that you do. The bigger the platform, the more grip you're gonna get uh, from it. And particularly if you're riding technical downhill shoots at speed, you can sometimes find your feet bouncing around. So that bigger platform is gonna be a safer bet over that smaller one. Pins, well these stop your feet sliding around and the longer the better here. But the only downside of using longer pins is when you smack them in your shins. You also need to take a look at the shape of the pedal. Now this can sometimes be created by the pin length or sometimes the body of the pedal. Basically you want a nice bowl in there so your foot really sits into that pedal to give you the most grip. The profile of the pedal is super important too. You're gonna get way more ground clearance with a skinnier pedal versus those fat offerings. Now this is really important when it comes to avoiding those pedal strikes or getting your lean on in the corner and not striking that pedal into the floor. So if you're running clips on your e-mountain bike, you're gonna have a couple of options on the style of pedal that you can run. You can get bigger platforms like this, which have that cleat engagement system in the middle of the bike, surrounded by a big platform, meaning if you can't clip in, you can still pedal and get a bit of traction from those pins and that bigger body itself. On the other hand, you can get small pedals, which are very minimalist, pretty much compromise of an axle or bearing and that cleat engagement system mounted on it. We often see pedals made out of metal, be it aluminium, titanium, or even magnesium, but we do see some great value from manufacturers when they offer a composite material pedal with those metal pins added in. However, the more money you spend on a quality pedal, you're gonna get better bearings, better sealing, stronger axles, and a stronger body, meaning that it can shrug off the hardest of hits. And one last thing you need to think about when it comes to pedals is the type of footwear that you run alongside your new grippy pedals. You could have the grippiest pedals in the world, but if you wear the wrong shoes, you're not gonna have a lot of grip. So you need to look for a cycling specific shoe from the likes of 510, Ride Concepts, Gyro, Specialized, they all do one that's gonna offer those super sticky soles to make sure that your super grippy pedals stay connected. Now moving up from the pedals, we're gonna go up to the handlebars and take a look at your grips. Now your grips are a really basic component, but they can have a huge impact as to your connection that you feel to your bike and of course your comfort. First up is gonna be the shape of the grips. Now you can get standard round grips, or you can get something like these offerings from Ergon, which are left and right side specific, and also the orientation that they mount on your handlebars is also gonna be marked too, meaning that grip shape is really sorted, so it's really comfortable in your hands. Your thickness of your grip is something you want to consider too. A Couple of options here, you've got those slim grips, which are gonna make you feel really connected to your ride, but will offer less comfort. On the other hand, you've got those big style foam commuter style grips, which will offer loads of comfort, but might make you feel less connected to your ride. The compound of your grip will have a massive part to play in the climates that you ride in. If you're riding in the rain, some simply don't work and we'll see your hands sliding around. A soft compound grip will offer tons of grip, but will wear super quick versus that hard compound grip, which will offer less grip, but will last a lot longer than that softer compound. Grip width is something you want to consider too. If you've got big hands, you're gonna need big grips. If you choose a grip that's too small, your hand's gonna be hanging off the end of the bars and that's not gonna be too comfortable. The locking collar of a grip is probably one of the best innovations in mountain biking ever. Basically, this little collar locks the grip to the handlebars, meaning whatever the conditions, you're gonna have a rock solid grip. Now the pattern on your grip is super important too. The more aggressive that pattern is, the more grip you're gonna have versus those softer, smoother options. Now, if you're riding in bad conditions, you want to be looking for that waffle pattern. It's really gonna let all that rainwater run out and let you keep your grip. 
A plug that goes in the end of your handlebars can potentially be a lifesaver if you were to land on the end of that unprotected bar. It's going to stop the grip doing a cookie cutter into whichever part of your body that it lands in. If you like crashing, I suggest looking for a grip that has replaceable bar end plugs. I mean, you don't have to replace that whole grip when you crash. And your grips aren't the only thing that can affect the comfort of your handlebar area. If you've got a bar that is too wide or too narrow, that can make your riding uncomfortable too. And also the sweep of the bars. If you've got that pushing too hard back into your hands, that can cause some pressure points in the palms. And of course, the bar height is also vitally important here. You can adjust that on the stem, get that right, because that can really affect your uh, position that you ride in on your bike and also your comfort levels being too far forward or sat back way too far. Right, that's the grips done. So let's take a look at the last contact point being the saddle. Now with an e-bike, you're gonna spend a lot of time in your saddle, much more than you would do on a conventional mountain bike due to that assistance of the motor powering you up those climbs. So let's take a look at this in a bit more detail. You can, of course, get e-mountain bike specific saddles. Now the idea of these is that that base of the saddle is gonna flex a bit more. You've got loads of layers of padding on there, which is gonna keep your bum super comfortable. And the rails in this actually flex a little bit to make sure you have a load of comfort. Now, whether you've brought an e-mountain bike specific saddle or a standard saddle, something you need to get right is the width of the saddle itself. Now, the width is where your sit bones are gonna seat on your saddle. So just make sure you get this right. You maybe need to go to a bike shop to get these measured, although you can do it at home. Just make sure you choose the right width to suit your seat bones. The length of the saddle is also super important. Surprisingly, you can get those super short saddles, which are still pretty comfortable on e-bike use, but saddle choice is ultimately personal. So something that might work for one rider might not work for you, so definitely shop around. Now there's a few different features that set these two saddles apart. One being an e-mountain bike saddle and one being a standard saddle. If you look at the e-mountain bike saddle, you've got that raised rear on the back. Now this is really good for pushing into on those steep climbs, meaning you won't slide off the back of that seat. Uh, and really good at holding your weight on that rear of the bike to make sure you get a load of grip. Also the amount of material that is in the back of this saddle is far more than this normal mountain bike saddle, meaning your behind's gonna be super comfortable. Now, if you haven't got an e-mountain bike saddle, they do really make the difference. So I suggest you get out there and try one. Now you might have the most comfy saddle in the world, but you can make it the most uncomfortable with just a few mistakes in that setup. Now, one thing you need to look at is the angle of your seat. You can tilt the nose up or you can tilt it down. Either way, that's gonna make a big difference to your comfort, as can how far it is forward or backwards in the rails. All this is all this adjustment is done on the top of that seat post. The suspension setup is also vital on your bike. If you've got your bike too soft, it's gonna to be too far down in its travel and it will affect that seat tube angle and again, alter the angle of the saddle. And lastly, look at the seat tube angle of your bike. If you've got something quite drastic, be steep or slack, you might need to get a drastic angle of your saddle to make it comfy too. And lastly, just make sure you use your saddle to its full potential. When you ride in your e-bike, you can slide around to the front and to the back of that saddle, and it can make huge differences when it comes to climbing and general riding around on your e-mountain bike. But that's it, changing your contact points on your bike can make a huge difference, comfort, confidence, and control of your bike. Let us know down in the comments which one you changed and which one made the biggest difference out on your ride. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN, and whilst you're there, check out the merch shop for all the new stock.